Hey guys, it's Susan, and today we're going to be making a wire-wrapped bezel ring. Don't forget, if you like our videos, to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you can see all of our future videos. So today we're going to be creating a wire wrapped bezel ring and I'm really enjoying doing these lately because it makes it look like you've actually bezel set the stone but you did everything with wire. It's lots of fun and really easy. So to get started with this project you're going to need some tools and supplies. First and most important you're going to need a stone and this is about a six millimeter coin shaped bead that is drilled through the center. And then you're also going to need some 20 gauge wire to make the ring and some 26 gauge wire to attach your stone to the inside of the ring. And you're definitely going to need a ring mandrel. This is a great tool. It's steel and it's marked with all of the sizes so you can size your ring and also form your ring. So you're also going to need some specialty tools. This is an AccuLoop plier. It's a really, really cool plier. It's essentially just a round nose plier, but you can see it's got millimeter sizes on it right here, so you can make a loop that exact millimeter size. And it starts at a two and goes to an eight, and since we're using a six millimeter stone, we're gonna make a seven millimeter bezel so that stone will fit right down into that bezel. And then you're also gonna need basic wire working tools, which include a chain nose and a flat nose plier. You'll need both today. And you're also gonna to wanna to have your flush cutter. All right, to get started, you want to cut yourself about two feet of this 20 gauge wire. And we're going to start right at the very center of this and we're going to make the bezel, form that bezel first. So I'm going to straighten this wire out just a bit and I'm going to use this AccuLoop plier right at that seven millimeter and I'm going to wrap the wire around the AccuLoop one and a half times. And then I'm going to just set my stone in there and just make sure I like the way it fits. I think that looks pretty good. So since I'm happy with that, I'll pop that right back in there and I'm going to bring my AccuLoop to the side and I'm going to pull that wire out into a 90 degree angle on one side and then I'm going to put it back in here and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of my bezel. And then on this side, where the wire is kind of on top of the bezel, I'm actually going to take this and grab right next to it and bend it straight down next to that wire, like so. And then I'm going to grab a flat nose plier and I'm going to bend it back outward. So that it's almost like both wires are next to the bottom of that bezel. And I'm just going to check it one more time. I'm using a little piece of labradorite and I want to make sure it fits right down into that bezel. Just like so. And it does. So perfect. So now I need to form the ring. So this is easier said than done if you don't have some place to hold on to your ring mandrel. And just because of where I am right now, I don't really have something to hold this. Normally I have a like a little hole in my bench where I put the end of my ring mandrel to hold it steady. You can also uh, use a vise to hold your ring mandrel. Uh, you can hold it between your knees. You can, um, uh, I mean, I, mostly vices, knees and holes and benches are the, probably the best ways to do it. Uh, but holding it yourself while you're doing this is a little bit complicated. I'm experienced and I've done it a lot of times so I can do it but I will recommend uh, that you have something else to help you. Sometimes I've even used a friend's hands to let them hold it while I do it. But for now, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do it. So I'm putting my thumb right on top of that bezel and I'm gonna wrap this wire two times around. And um, then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Hold on to the bezel. So I'm gonna hold right there this time and wrap two times and you see I'm kind of lifting up so I can get underneath there two times around. Go under the bezel and one more time on the opposite side. Now the most important part of this, or a couple important things, first of all you don't want your wires to overlap on the bottom. So I'm going to turn that over and see they're not overlapped. And second of all you want those wires to go underneath the bezel. Now the other thing I want you to see is that I've started at a size seven. And I am actually trying to make a size six ring. 
So what you have to do when you work on these ring mandrels is you have to remember that these types of wire rings shrink when you make them. And so you always wanna start about a size bigger than what you actually want. So since I want a size six, I actually wrap the wire around that ring mandrel at the size seven. So I'm just gonna pull everything nice and tight so it looks good. And then I'm going to carefully pull this off of here and hold it all together while I take these side wires here and wrap around the edges. So I'm just gonna bend that and I'm gonna push it through. And this is a good time to grab that chain nose plier right now. So grab that pull. And then I'm gonna wrap it around the sides here a couple times. And this is all kind of a design decision. You at least wanna go twice. But if you want to, you can go three times or even four times. It just depends on what you like the look of. But you at least wanna go two times to make sure that this is a good, sturdy, finished ring. So that's a couple times right there. And then let me do the same thing on the other side. Just gonna take this and push through the ring and wrap. So whatever you do, you wanna make sure if you wrap two times on that side, you wrap two times on this side. So let me just pull this in a little bit. This is a, this is a German style wire that I'm using right now, which is great for rings because it's a little bit harder. However, it's not as easy to wrap with as your softer wires. So I'm gonna go one more time around that and finish that off on the inside. And then I'm gonna go one more time around this side, just to make sure I'm happy with how everything looks. Good. And then I'm gonna trim this off on the inside using my flush cutter. And then I'm gonna take that flat nose plier and I'm gonna squish this in to the inside of that band. And you wanna feel that and make sure that it's nice and flush up against the inside. And one of the things that I do to make sure that happens is I actually take my plier, first I squeeze it in, and then I actually almost burnish the end. So you see I'm kind of turning that like that because you don't ever wanna feel that wire on your ring. When you put it on your finger, you want it to be smooth and comfortable. So let's make sure I've got my bezel the way I like it and everything looks pretty and it's right in the middle. And then you see the wires coming across underneath there. Those are kind of domed and if I did it right now, it kind of makes the stone stick up a little bit. So you actually wanna create a little bit of a flattened place for your ring. So I'm gonna lift this up a little bit, go underneath that and just squeeze that with my flat nose plier and make a little flattened spot for my bead. And then I'm gonna press it back down. And that'll make it a lot neater looking. So yeah, that's gonna fit right in there. And so then just take check the rest of your ring, make sure everything looks good. Final step is to put it back onto the mandrel and push it up to the size you wanted, which I wanted a size six. And I'm right at that size six there. I'm actually a little tiny bit over, but it's pretty close. So then we're gonna just kind of stretch that ring just a little bit, just to make sure everything looks really neat and clean. Like so. And then final step is to put your stone in. And I'm gonna check this one, because this is a piece of Labradorite that I'm using, and I like to use the flashiest side. So let's see which one, this side looks flashier to me. That's Labradorescent, see that? How pretty that is? So I definitely want that side on top. So now I'm gonna take a little piece of 26 gauge wire and you don't need a lot, about six inches should do it. And like I said, the stone is drilled right through the center. Push that wire through the hole, make sure I keep the side up that I want and bend the wire down on either side, like so. And then we are going to go down through the top of the bezel. And see how I'm putting one wire on each side Make sure you can see that. One wire on each side of that flattened spot I made. And then, let's see here. Pull that down, like so, and like so, into, like 
bezel. There we go. And now I'm just gonna take this wire and I'm gonna wrap it up underneath here. And I don't ever wanna see it again, so I'm, I'm gonna wrap it around and then I'm gonna push it through and underneath the bezel wire. Because I don't want, I don't ever want to see this again, so I'm gonna be real sneaky about where I place my wire. So just pull it tight and just do one side and then the other. Just wrap them a couple times underneath. And I'm using my chain nose plier to make sure that I get under there and also kind of using it to kind of poke it through because your fingers definitely get in the way when you're doing stuff like this. There we go. All right, I got it. All right, bend that down and then finish it off. Up underneath. Press that in so you don't feel it. And then do the same thing on the other side with the other one. So around. under, pull, nice and tight, and get everybody straight, and then trim off underneath. And I try to trim off really close to the inside there where I can kind of hide that, hide that wire. And then just check all of your wires underneath and make sure you're happy with how they feel and that you've done a good job burnishing and hiding any little ends. So there you go. Pretty cute. That is how you make a wire wrapped bezel ring. Don't forget some of those supplies and tools you need. Absolutely 100% a six millimeter coin shaped bead. Really you can do any size coin shaped bead you want to. Uh, just adjust the size of your bezel. You'll need that 20 gauge wire, preferably in a half hard or German style wire, and also the 26 gauge wire to wrap your stone into the bezel. As far as tools and supplies are concerned, we're going to need a ring mandrel marked with the sizes so you can shape and size your ring. And you'll also need one of those AccuLube pliers so you can shape and size your bezel. And then basic tools, chain nose, flat nose, flush cutter. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys would like to pick up some supplies like the ones we work with today, check out the links down below. What gemstone would you use in your bezel? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell, and we'll see you again next time.